Hello, I'm Murray Carter. This is my little knife here I carry every day. And as we've already established in other videos, a knife can become really sharp when you have the correct secondary and primary edge geometry. It's the relationship of the two geometries together that make a blade truly sharp. Now, in the custom knife making world, there are three predominant styles of grinding the secondary edge. Those three styles are hollow grinding, flat grinding, and convex edge grinding. Today I'm going to take three uh, blades that I heat treated last night, and I'm going to grind each one a different way. I'll grind one a hollow grind, another a flat grind, and another a convex grind. And then after we've completed grinding all three knives, I'll briefly discuss the attributes, the pros and cons of each style of knife grinding. Okay, let's turn on the grinder and get to work. Okay, so as you can see, I just ground these uh, three perfect model neck knives uh, more or less the same way, in the same manner. The stone's a little bit chattery. We're uh, trying to dress it out. And when a stone is chattery like that, it actually will grind a blade uh, in a convex edge by default. Uh, if you have a perfectly smooth rotating stone, you can get a hollow grind. But either way, for me, this is just a means of hogging away the material. And now I'll go to my other grinders to get the, uh, the final desired result. Now, looking at these blades from the spine, because they're all hand forged, I can see they're of varying thickness. So, because hollow grinding removes the most amount of material away from the secondary edge, I'm going to choose the thickest knife for the hollow grind. And because a convex edge grinding removes the least amount of material and is the strongest kind of edge, I'm going to put the convex edge on the thinnest knife and uh, I'm going to put a flat grind on the uh, middle size, middle thickness blade. Okay, follow me over to my grinders and we'll get underway. Okay, with a hollow grind, it's real important to uh, establish a, uh, a hollow flat or a hollow surface on your blade, and then every time you put the blade back against the grinding wheel, you need to fit the wheel back into that hollow. Otherwise, you'll have a multifaceted grind. So there's a start of a hollow grind done on one side only. And now we'll uh, proceed to a convex grind.
Okay, with the convex grind, it's real important that you keep your blade moving, otherwise it'll end up being a uh, hollow grind. No movement will equal a hollow grind. A little bit of movement will get it very close to being a flat grind, and a lot of rocking backwards and forwards will get it to be convex. Now the problem with a convex grind is it's very difficult to make a nice straight grind line, but it does make uh, it does make for a potentially a strong grind or a strong blade. Okay, next we'll do a flat grind. Okay, another way to get a, a convex grind is to take a little piece of PVC sponge and then uh, put some uh, graphite tape on top of that so that this belt has something to slide on. And now what we'll do is we'll push the uh, secondary edge down into that PVC sponge, which you can see has some give. And uh, you can determine the amount of convex uh, grind by how soft or how hard you push into this sponge. So uh, this convex grind that I did earlier is a little, little too flat for my liking. I want a little bit more convex. So I'm going to show you this other way to get convex grinds. Okay, and on it goes. You keep grinding until you get uh, something that you're satisfied with. Now let's go to the whiteboard. A lot of you are thinking that I chose the thick knife for the hollow grind and the thin knife for the convex grind. And some of you must be thinking, oh, wouldn't it be backwards? If Murray wanted to make a really strong blade, wouldn't he take the thickest steel knife and then put the potentially most durable type or strongest type of grind on it, which would be a convex edge? And conversely, wouldn't he take that thin blade and then use that for the hollow grind because that's gonna be for light tasks anyway? Yeah, that's one way of thinking. What I did with these three blades is I basically made them equal in strength by grinding a hollow grind on the thick blade and a convex grind on the thin blade and, of course, a flat grind on the a medium thickness blade. But just because something is hollow ground or just because something is convex ground, it doesn't inherently mean it's stronger or weaker. Now, let's go to the blackboard and uh, I'll draw some illustrations of what I'm talking about. Okay, now here, this is just a hypothetical situation, but here we have two blades that start out at the same thickness, but one has a very deep hollow grind to where down here towards the primary edge, you have barely a millimeter of steel. And we have another blade that's hollow ground, same thickness, but it's three or four millimeters of, of, of steel right there and there behind the primary edge. So just because it's hollow ground doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be weaker. Now, conversely, with a convex grind, again, here are two blades that start off at the same thickness, and they both have a convex grind, but this can be, this can come down so thin that it could be a fairly uh, weak and not suitable for uh, abuse. And a grind like this, of course, you could use for an ax or a splitting maul. So what we're really looking for when we talk about convex versus hollow in terms of strength is this area here. You know, how much metal do we have behind the primary edge? And, uh, you know, there's... Uh, applications for all these different kind of grinds. Now you've noticed I haven't mentioned much about flat grind because a flat grind, generally speaking, is a compromise between both the hollow grind and the convex grind. And again, a, a flat ground blade can have either of these uh, qualities. It can be flat ground 
like that, or it can be flat ground like that. So uh, what are some of the advantages and disadvantages of these different grinds? Well, we've already established that the flat grind it typically is a compromise. Uh, a great advantage of the flat grind blade is if you are going to uh, pursue sharpening of your knives with uh, sharpening stones by hand, the flat ground blade offers some advantages in that you already have a flat bevel to start with. However, if the blade has an obtuse grind, even though it's flat, it still puts you behind the curve when you go to sharpen it by hand because you probably need to remove a whole lot of metal if it's too obtuse in order to get it so it'll cut adequately. The hollow ground blade uh, is popular for couple of different reasons. First is, is it makes for a really pretty grind. And, you know, unlike kitchen knives, which sell by reputation, outdoor knives or neck knives or hobby knives typically sell because someone visually looks at them and then decides on impulse that they've got to have it. So the hollow grind on a custom knife or within the custom knife making world uh, is popular because it, this sharp corner between the hollow grind and the flat of the blade enables for some really sharp, clean looking grinding. Conversely, the convex is the most difficult to present a nice grind line because there's such a subtle angle between where the grind stops and where the uh, original blade thickness begins. A flat grind is again in between. It's possible to make some pretty grind lines with flat grind, but uh, more difficult than it is with a hollow grind. Now, another advantage of the hollow grind knife is because it's typically a little thinner down towards the primary edge, it is a little easier for the end user to maintain. There's usually less metal to grind away when you go to regrind your secondary edge. So there you have it. There's three different ways of, of, of grinding blades. I've got the uh, convex hollow and flat grind there, and these still need to be finished up. Uh, but just because one's hollow or flat or convex, just that criteria alone doesn't really paint the whole picture for you. You need to see the relative blade thickness, you have to see how the grind has been executed, and in, in terms of strength, you have to see how much steel remains right behind the primary edge. And then finally, of course, what you want to use it for. Okay, this is Murray Carter from Carter Cutlery. Stay sharp.